Our text today will be Romans 8.28. And uh, I would just like to say this is one of those times when we'll start with Romans 8.28 and we'll go up to 30. I would like to start with Romans 8.28. Those of you that are having a little bit of difficulty out there as you are watching us, may I say to you right now, it's a very difficult time in my life. It's a very difficult time in our church. And... I'm not even going to say that my life is as difficult as some of these things that other people are undergoing, the things that they are going through. Um, as a pastor, sometimes the difficulties in your life are not because of your personal things, you know. The difficulty in my life sometimes really is because of other people and the consequences that they face. When you are a pastor, you cannot help but feel for other people. You cannot help but know that they have problems. You cannot help but have emotion. You cannot have uh, a detachment. Sometimes we do that as pastors. We learn, we, we actually turn, try to learn to detach from being too involved, especially being emotionally involved in the things that we do. But you know what? The, the truth of the matter is we are affected. And that is part and parcel of the principle that I said before. You do not have to be an evil person to be dinged by life. Life is hard. And so life takes a toll. And the day-to-day -day things that we do, it takes a toll on us. And so I would like to read the first verse today from Romans 8. And I would like to uh, go through quickly Romans 28, 29, and 30. But let me read quickly Romans 28. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Now, a lot of people know the first part and we know that all things work together for good you know people say that and we know that in all things god works for the good of those who love him and in fact the popular version is we know that all things work together for good for those who love god but you have to finish that you know it says for those who love god do you love god because that's the only way that you can get to that point where even as bad things happen it will work for the good why because the, sec the second portion of Romans 28 says, uh, Romans 8.28 says, Who have been called according to His purpose? If you have been called according to His purpose, then God, because that is God's purpose, okay? And by didactic reasoning, deductive, we deduce then that then, the purpose that God wants to give is a good purpose. And so at the end of that, there, that line, that lifeline that you have, there is a good purpose. And so, whether things are hard or things are easy or things are bad or things are good or things are testing and trying, whether in health or in sickness, with ease or with difficulty, war or peace, whatever it is that happens, we then are in the, po in the position of knowing that at the very end of that rainbow, there is a purpose for everything. That's why nowadays, that's what I do. I keep being reminded of the words, keep, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. I am in a storm, but I still believe that I am in the eye of the storm. As I am in the eye of the storm, I am unaffected by the storm as much as can be. I know I have difficulties. I feel difficulties. I feel a heaviness in my heart. People around me are sick. Workers are having problems. There's all these things that are happening all around us. But the one good thing that is true is that God is in control. Verse 29 says, For those God foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Now that word predestined is a big theological concept. It's being debated. It has been debated for thousands of years and will continue to be debated, but I don't want to talk about that right now. What I want to talk about is that for those God foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son. And Jesus was the ultimate model. I would like to talk about that. Conform to the image of His Son. That Jesus was the ultimate model. And it is my hope and prayer that every day that I live, I will be able to model Jesus. Despite my trials, despite my distractions, despite my weaknesses, despite my shortcomings, despite the sins that I commit. I pray that I would model Jesus. That He might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. 
Then verse 30 says, and all those he and those he predestined he also called, those he called he also justified, those he justified he also glorified. Let's go back to Romans 28. I mean Romans 8 28. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him. I would like you to look at your situation and see that at this point, anything that happens to you, if you are called for God's purpose, and okay, that's the end portion, who have been called according to God's word. If you are called for God's purpose, you are called for God's purpose, then at the very end, whatever it is that is the difficulty you are facing, in joblessness, sickness, trials in relationship, all these things are things that God can handle, that God can use and is using to shape you. If you are called for God's purpose, you know the funny thing about life, even as you are called for God's purpose, we know that accompanying that is not a bed of roses. It's not going to be an easy life. Doing the right thing is always a difficult choice. Believing in the truth means having to change, and change is always difficult. And doing the right thing is always a difficult choice. And so, because we have this purpose, because we know this purpose, we know that any circumstance that befalls us, God is in charge. Do we need resources? God will give resources. Do we need wisdom? God will give wisdom. Do we need strength? Do we need health? What do you need in your life today? If you need anything, God is able to provide it for you. As long as we are living in the parameters of His Word. You know, as long as we are reading the word and following the word. Because you, some of you have lived and some are still living in such a way that they live and they know it's evil and they know it's wrong, but God seems to bless. There is a time for all of that. But as I've seen here in my church, those that decide to do evil, those that decide to do wrong, ultimately face the consequences. I heard a little lesson today. There's this person who was talking about stress. And I thought he was talking about food. He said, stress will come out of your body and show itself in many ways, shape, or form. In your eyes, in your hair, in your face, in your belly, in your arms, in your legs. He said, you have to combat stress. And stress is not from God. As we know, we are told not to worry. And so 30, as we close, says, and those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. I believe I'm a predestined person. That is predestiny. God chose me. And He also called me. He called me. I know my call. My call is to be a pastor. Under what circumstances? Where my, my idealist self says, this is my calling as a pastor. I am here. And I am preaching. And I am working in the church. And I'm doing this full time. This is my ideal thing. But... I don't know if God's call involves changing my circumstances. Maybe someday I become a missionary. Maybe someday I leave this church and do something else. And I'm not thinking that. I really am wanting to stay. But I don't know. We never know how God is going to call us. And we never know the circumstances that God will put us in. We don't know that. He may pluck me from America and put me in some other country. He may pluck me from this church and put me in some other church in another county. I really don't know. All I know is this, all I know is this, I am called by God. And right now, at this very moment, by God's grace, at this point in time, I know my calling. And that is the pastor. Why? Because things have happened. I can't make anything happen. Of course, I cannot heal people. Of course, I cannot forgive sins. Of course, I cannot change people's circumstances or heal relationships. I cannot do anything for any people. But the one thing that I know I can do, is I can obey God. I can bow my head. I can pray. I can lay hands on people. And by the definition of the word, things happen. Healings happen. Improvement happens in people's lives. Salvation happens. And so, that is not my thing. It is something that God allows to happen. And God, since God allows that to happen, I know that now I am in agreement with God. When I do these things, I am aligned with God's will. And so I know my call. I am called to pastor. Now, in definition, those he called, he also justified. Why justified? Why do we need justification? Because I am an evil man. I am a sinner saved by grace. I know some people that are way kinder than me. They are in full-time ministry also. They are way kinder than me. I am not one of those people. 
I'm not one of those people. I cannot stand on the past. I cannot stand on credentials. I only know that God saved me and God forgave me. And so now I have the privilege to be called His Son. And that being the case now, He has justified me. Whatever it is that is wrong, whatever it is that is wrong in me, is weak in me, my shortcomings, whatever it is that is my failing in the here and now, He justifies. And I may, may I say, I justify my actions by that. Not that I will do anything and everything that I want to do, no. But I will do the things that He wants to do in order that my life will be just, that justice will be served. And not, not for my justice, because my, 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 uh, I deserve, in terms of justice, I deserve to be punished. But I'm thankful that He justified me. That this righteousness that we carry is not mine, but it is Christ. It covers me. His blood covers me. I've never claimed to be a righteous man. Even in my proud moments, I've never claimed to be a righteous man. I may have claimed to be a smart man or a strong man or a fast man or a competent man. But with regards to righteousness, it is God's righteousness. And even those claims are wrong. I, I humble myself and admit that they are wrong. But I know that He justified me. And at the very end, He says, those He justified, He also glorified. There's a lot of glory in the world. And the world's glory is fleeting. But God's glory... If He glorifies you, if He separates you, if He appoints you, if He puts you in a pedestal, if that is God's pedestal, not to be proud, then it is justified. Then it is glorified to Him, and of course, it is right. So how difficult is your life today? Can you say that you can believe that everything works together for good? And if things do not work together for good as far as you're concerned, let me tell you, the Bible is not wrong. You have to change your attitude. Now, some of us are able to accept that precept because we know Jesus in our lives, but some of us don't. And so I want to give you this opportunity for things to work out for you, your circumstances, for it to be working for good. You need Jesus in your life. And so I have a prayer that goes like this. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Savior and my Lord. Take control of the throne of my life. Give me the forgiveness of sin. Give me eternal life. Make me the kind of person you want me to be. If this is something that your heart desires, may I ask you to pray with me. The time to be saved is now. We do these things. We make the effort. We make the time. We put our resources here. Not asking for monetary support. Because we know that the currency of heaven is souls. And your soul should be important to you. And so if you feel this leading, I would like to pray with you. Let's pray together. That prayer again as I repeat it. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Savior and my Lord. Take control of the throne of my life. Give me the forgiveness of sin. Give me eternal life. And make me the kind of person you want me to be. You pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you accepted Jesus Christ today, then it is my hope and prayer, and now with foundation according to Scripture, that all may work for good in your circumstances in your life. Have a good day. Have a good life. Be blessed. Thank you.